Grade 8 math number 11.1c. We're in chapter 11 now and we're talking about angle relationships. We can justify angle relationships. We've been talking about how a transversal line intersects two lines in the same plane at two different points. So we have parallel lines and we have a transversal cutting through it. See that? It can go on a negative slope or a positive slope. And we know now that transversals run across parallel lines and will make eight angles. So when a set of parallel lines are cut by a set of parallel transversals, we get 16 different angles with two different degree measures. So here we've got a set of parallel lines cut by parallel transversals. Look at that. And again, just like we said in the last video, there's only two measures. If this angle is 65 degrees, well, this angle is 65 degrees. See that? And if this one is 115 degrees, this one's 115 degrees. And we only have two measures, either 65 degrees or 115 degrees. See that? Okay, so quick reminder, interior is inside the parallel lines, exterior is outside the parallel lines, and that is our transversal, okay? We've got corresponding angles like one and five, they're the same measure. We've got same side interior angles, they're on the interior on the same side of the transversal, like 3 and 5. We have alternate interior ones, so they're going to be in the interior. It says interior, but they're alternate, so 4 and 5 would be alternate ones. And alternate exterior ones are on opposite sides, alternate sides of the transversal. And they're in the exterior of the parallel lines, like 2 and 7 or 1 and 8. Okay, So we can use tracing paper or tissue paper like gift wrapping tissue paper, to make conclusions about the congruence of these angles. Just don't use tissue toilet paper because that's going to fall apart on you, okay? So what we can do is take a piece of tissue paper like this that you can see through, all right? And we can draw the exact same thing on here. And let me put my marker down. What we can do is lay our tissue paper over our, our drawing like this and we can line up the measures okay so we can see angle one and angle two there now I put this curve here on angle one so we can watch what happens when we move this down to angle five I got my fan on so it's kind of blowing it around but can you see how angle five lines up perfectly where angle one was and angle six is the same as angle two See that? And we can even flip this around and turn it upside down. And we can see that the angle 1 matches with angle 8. See that? And it matches with angle 4. See that? So you can use tissue paper to help you casually justify that these angles are the same. Okay? Just so you can get a visual. You just trace the diagram and lay the paper on top of the drawing and move it around to see which angles are congruent. So when I measured it, angles 1, 4, 5, and 8 were all 140 degrees. 1, 4, 5, and 8, those are the bigger obtuse angles. Those were 140 degrees, and 2, 3, 6, and 7 were only 40 degrees. And see, 140 plus 40 makes 180. That makes our supplementary angles. Remember we talked about in the last video? So do you remember... The acute angles are less than 90 degrees. The obtuse angles are larger than 90 degrees. Just think, they're cute. They're cute and little. So that's how you can remember the acute ones are the small ones. And obtuse is like, it starts with OB, like obese. So that would be the fat one, the big open one. And then right angles are 90 degrees, okay? Straight angles are 180 because they make a straight line, okay? So... We can see we have two measures, 140 and 40. That equals the 180 degrees for the supplementary angle. Well, we can sp see special angle pairs. We can see corresponding angles, like angles 1 and angle 5. Angles 1 and angle 5, they're the same measure. They're congruent to each other. And alternate interior angles, okay, keyword interior. So they're going to be on the inside of the parallel lines, so angles 3 and 6. Because they're alternate, that means they're on opposite sides of the transversal, that line cutting through it. And then four and six would also be alternate, four and five, I'm sorry, would be alternate interior ones, wouldn't they be? 
and then the alternate exterior, alternate means on opposite sides of the transversal, exterior means outside of the parallel lines, so the alternate exterior angles would be 1 and 8 and 2 and 7. See that? But that last one, the same side interior ones, they're on the same side of the transversal, they're on the interior of the parallel lines, they are not congruent to each other. Angles 3 and 5 are not congruent to each other. This one's acute, this one's obtuse. This one's obtuse, this one's acute. See, they're opposites. They total 180 degrees. They are not equal to each other. Remember that little symbol means not equal. All right? Now, one last thing. What if we've got a set of parallel lines, but the transversal is running perpendicular? Okay? It's running directly straight up and down. And this is the symbol for perpendicular. If you ever see that, that means perpendicular line C. Okay? So you would know, or it would, it would be like, uh, you know, line BC, okay? It would be like that. And then you would know that that's a perpendicular line, okay? And when you see this little box, that means it's a 90 degree angle. So if you ever just saw this and it was unlabeled like that, and you just saw the little box, you'd know that it's a 90 degree angle. Well, we can see that these are 90 degrees. If one angle in this situation is 90 degrees, they're all 90 degrees if they're going through parallel lines. Every single angle is going to be 90 degrees if the transversal is going through parallel lines, okay? If the lines aren't parallel, then you might have a transversal. This is just a little extra info. You might have a line going this way, another line going this way, and a transversal. These two are not parallel, are they? But what if this one is perpendicular here, see? So that's going to be in the future. We'll talk about that. But for right now, we're talking about parallel lines. And if the parallel lines have a transversal and it's hitting one angle at 90 degrees, you know they're all 90 degrees, okay? So we're going to talk about finding a missing measure in the next video. And you can already see from these that if one of these measures were missing, we'd be able to find it, wouldn't we? Because it would be either 140 or 40, right? And knowing these rules, we'd be able to find a missing measure. So we're going to talk about that in 11.1D. And we're moving forward. And I'll see you next video. Bye.